Hello again. Uh, I am recording this video. Uh, someone has asked me a question in the comments of another video about how I would go about using uh, the camera uh, to give myself like a like a horror uh, kind of like screen view effect, uh, rather than having like a flashlight I'm holding, or you know, it's always going to be casting light forward, that kind of thing. Uh, and so uh, the way I would actually go about uh, approaching that would be with a post process. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, what we're talking about here is like, like if I had like if this was like my my view screen or something like that, and uh, I had just like you know a, like a spotlight in my hand, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, like this would be you know kind of what we're talking about here. Of like this is like my like everything in there is lit and everything out here is dark or black that kind of thing how would I get that kind of thing without just relying on a single light in my hand and um, we're gonna use a post process to kind of do that so the first thing I need to do is add a post process to this level this is a level from another tutorial that I did on AI placement uh, and so it's a decent kind of slightly creepy looking area that we can kind of do this with uh, and so what I will type here is post and then we'll just add a post process volume if you've never worked with post-process volumes before, by default, if we have something set here, for example, if I'm changing the, the, the white balance here, uh, I have to be inside of these bounds for this to affect us. So the first thing we need to make sure that we're doing for this is we are going to scroll down and we're going to set infinite bounds so that this thing, to make sure that this thing affects us no matter what. Um, we're going to use something that you may not have used before. Under rendering features, there is this top one post process material. We're going to actually make ourselves a material and plug this in there. So let me make myself just a material here to start with. And we're going to call this um, flashlight effect post process material. And I will add that to this array. So I'm going to click this plus button. I'm going to hit choose and instead of using this one here I'm going to use an asset reference and I'm going to select my flashlight effect post process material and so now this will uh, basically route uh, the final image through uh, our material and we can do some changes here Okay, so now that we're inside of our, our post-process material, the first thing we need to do is change this to a uh, post-process material. You'll notice that everything goes away except our emissive. This is because our post-process occurs after uh, everything has been calculated out and we're just gonna be basically doing what amounts to Photoshop effects uh, to our information. And so I need to grab my scene texture this is the node that will let us uh, get information. You'll notice that everything is black here. I'm going to plug this into our emissive. It's going to still give us an error, and I'll tell you why. Uh, scene color is only specifically available in the surface thing. Uh, what we need is post-process input zero. Input zero is basically the scene itself. So now I have a normal view here. Uh, and what I want to do to duplicate this effect is we're going to use a sphere mask. Uh, so I'm going to type in sphere mask and we're going to plug this into our emissive out and we're going to plug uh, we're going to use this actually as a, uh, a multiplier so we're going to multiply this there we go so we're going to have that that's going to be plugged into our emissive out this is going to give us an error because we're going to have we don't have any information here right now um, and so what I want to do here logic wise this is going to find basically the distance between A and B based on a radius return a value of 0 to 1 so I'll be multiplying my color out uh, by any number between 0 and 1 and if it's by 0 it'll be black by 1 it will be whatever this color was and since I want to center this on the center of my screen uh, this node here actually gives us a lot of useful information this is the size of our screen so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, because this is our number of pixels, I'm going to divide this by 2. And I'm going to use that as our center, because that will produce the center of our screen. Uh, and now this is just giving us a value that this requires a value of B. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get our uh, pixel. We need to grab our screen position. 
And so here's our viewport UV and pixel position is what we want. And if I plug this in, you'll probably notice there's like a little line there. So we just need to adjust the radius down. And you notice we start getting, you know, a smaller and smaller viewport thing. I'm going to stick this at like maybe 250, something like that to start out with. I'm going to adjust the hardness down pretty far down. And that's going to give us this more nicer gradation. Uh, and now, if I save this and I look at our level, this has been applied to our, our, our view post-process, meaning that lights haven't changed in the level, we're not, we're not adding any new information to our scene, we're just adjusting how we can see it. And now I have this kind of weirder controlled, like, you know, potential um, screen view here of what's going on. Um, and I could add some more effects to this. We can even we can adjust this a little bit. Let's let's make that like 300. It's a little bit better. And this is a kind of like this is probably the base I would start with trying to start producing this effect. If I want, you know, from like the Resident Evil style or something, where like this sways back and forth a little bit as I move. Uh, I would most likely use a um, parameter collection collection parameter and I'd have to point this I'd have to actually go make one uh, so I have to go to like materials a material parameter collection so I'd make a new collection here and I'd probably use that and I'd, I'd adjust that based on uh, like player motion left and right things like that uh, and I'd add that to where the center of my screen was. So I would basically uh, add that somewhere right around here uh, to adjust where the center of this view is every frame. So hopefully that was uh, at least a useful kind of like how to potentially start approaching this kind of a, uh, a mechanic, uh, or I guess not mechanic, uh, kind of effect you want if you're looking for like a more horror-y style game. Uh, and so, yeah, thanks for watching.